What's going on everybody? Pastor Jeff here with Thursday's Theology. Welcome to Season 3. I'm stoked to be trying out some new things this season, including video intros where all of you get to see my beautiful face. Also, a new season means a new game. For Season 3, you will get to see me attempt to play Battlefield 5. The reason I chose Battlefield 5 is that I am a huge World War II fan. In fact, I studied World War II for both my undergraduate and graduate degrees. Right there, and right there. Eh? 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 Undergrad? Grad. Undergrad. Grad. What better way to honor that affection than getting my butt kicked online? All that to say, you'll get to see me play Battlefield 5 online and die a lot. For the first series of Season 3, we're going to take a deep dive into Phase 2 of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. That means we'll be discussing Iron Man 3, Thor The Dark World, Captain America The Winter Soldier, Guardians of the Galaxy, Avengers Age of Ultron, and Ant-Man. Phase 2 of the MCU has some really, really great movies but it also has some really, really terrible movies. For the first few episodes of Season 3, we're going to be discussing the good, the bad, and the theology of Phase 2 of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So, without any further ado, let's kick off Season 3 of Thursday's Theology by taking a look at Iron Man 3. Once again, I'm Pastor Jeff. Let's dive in. There is no getting around it. Iron Man 3 is not a good film. Uh, according to an article by Business Insider, Iron Man 3 ranks dead last in the overall rankings of the MCU. It has its moments, and, and don't get me wrong, but it is a very, very tough movie to watch. Uh, from the weird plot line to the cheesy dialogue, Iron Man 3 is not an easy movie to watch. But that does not mean that it, has, that it doesn't have some theological truths on display. So far as bad as the movie itself is, it actually gives us really good insight into some of the socio-political dynamics of King Saul in 1 Samuel. Uh, we have discussed King Saul before, but to recap for those who aren't familiar, Saul was appointed by God to be the first king of Israel, and the book of 1 Samuel records Saul's appointment and reign as the first king over Israel. His installation as king, however, is not smooth. In fact, Israel's insistence on having a king to lead them is met with deep sadness by both Samuel the prophet and by God. Uh, 1 Samuel chapter 8, verses 7-9 through 9 says this, and the Lord told him, "Listen to all that people are all that the people are saying to you. It is not you they have rejected, but they have rejected me as their king, as they have done from the day I brought them out of Egypt until this day, forsaking me and serving other gods. For they are going to you, or for so they are doing to you. Excuse me. Now listen to them, but warn them solemnly and let them know what the king who will reign over them will claim as his rights." It was never God's intention to have a king over Israel because God was supposed to be their sovereign ruler. So for Is the Israelites to insist on a human king to rule over them was a rejection of God. So when Saul was appointed king over Israel, it took years for him to unify the twelve tribes and bring them under one rulership. Once this was done, he was able to defeat the enemies of Israel and solidify his control over the tribes. But those battles took a toll on Saul. Not only did the prolonged military campaigns cost Saul money, but his ascension to the throne of Israel meant that he had also made enemies. Once Saul had led Israel to victory in battle, all of his energy went to maintaining his power and influence. And this is where Iron Man 3 comes into play. Throughout Iron Man 3, we see Tony Stark becoming more and more dependent on his suits to cope with the stress of maintaining his control over the chaos around him. In the movie, we see Stark plagued with anxiety stemming from the Battle of New York. The way he copes is by relying more and more on his own creations to keep him and his loved ones safe. When Saul rose to power in Israel, it was met with cheers by the people. He was the long-awaited king that led them to victory in battle. But once those victories were won, Saul's reign became more about maintaining his power. Saul became paranoid as, as he began to rule Israel, and in fact, in, as his story progresses, he ends up losing God's favor as king, and the prophet Samuel is told to appoint a shepherd boy named David as the next king of Israel. Saul spends years plotting against, chasing after, and trying to kill David because he represents the biggest threat to Saul's power. Now, you can see throughout the story of Saul, he, become, he goes from a young, brilliant military leader to an old, paranoid, and vindictive king. Now, Tony Stark eventually is able to muster the strength to defeat his enemies in Iron Man 3, but the story of how his paranoia and weakness drives him to the brink of defeat parallels King Saul in the book of 1 Samuel. Saul loses God's favor and is eventually replaced by the shepherd David. And Saul, unlike Tony Stark, succumbs to his weakness and loses his position as king. But 
The underlying issues that plagued both Tony Stark and King Saul provide a compelling look into what happens when we worry more about our own power and privilege and not about the responsibility of our role. Even though Iron Man 3 is one of the worst Marvel movies, it still gives us key insight into the danger dangers of maintaining control of our own kingdoms and that is the theology that can be drawn out of tony stark's story in iron man 3 and there you have it thanks for joining me for this week's episode of thursday's theology if you want your weekly dose of theology don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below you can always get more information about theology by going to thursdaystheology.com and checking out all the content we have there as always i'm pastor jeff thanks for joining me as we explore who god is what the bible says and why it all matters and remember, theology doesn't always have to be difficult. It is simply the study of who God is. Take care. We'll see you next week.